Good evening. I'm going to start uh, and call to order uh, the City of Laredo Fine Arts and Culture <coughs> Commission meeting uh, to be held today, October 21st, 2021, here at Joe A. Guerra Laredo Public Library. Um, I'm going to call me to order and then uh, do a pledge of allegiance. Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Can you do us a favor of calling the roll call, please? Dr. Martha Villarreal, present. Dr. Colleen Campbell, absent. Julio Mendez. Carlos Abraham Flores. Present. Armando Lopez. Present. Gail April Rodriguez. She's not virtually absent. Robert Lopez. Present. Rosie Santos. Present. We have a quorum. Okay. Oh. Uh, um, I'm sorry, Jesse Shaw. Jesse Shaw, he, um, he's absent as well. We have a car. Next, we move to uh, Roman numeral four, citizens' comments. Do we have anybody signed up? Not yet. Okay. Can you say we have to 545? 545. Three more minutes in case if something comes in, I'll let you know. All right. <clears throat> Before you, you have the minutes of the last meeting of August 19th, 2021. Uh, I'm hoping you all have had an opportunity to, to be able to review those. And if you have, I'll entertain a motion to approve it. A motion that we voted. Tremendous moves. Is there a second? Thank you. Robert Lopez seconds. All those in favor, uh, signify by raising your hand. Right. We can see our virtual vote. Oh, thank you. It passes <laughs> unanimously. Uh, next, we have a uh, section six of our uh, agenda communications and announcements. Do we have any communications? No. Okay. And this <laughs> well, I just, I just want to announce uh, Rosie over at Center for the Arts. Uh, they're having the uh, Dia de los Muertos, the celebration November 2nd. And there, there's a currently uh, an Altares uh, display that people can still apply to if they would like to, to do that. So just get a hold of Rosie and she'll send you the form uh, to, to do that. Right in November. Uh, the Laredo Center for the Arts is bringing a native um, Laredo, Cesar Martinez, who is an internationally known artist. He's a Chicano artist. And uh, he's being brought to Laredo to show, uh, to have a, a show of his work. That will be on November the 15th. And uh, I encourage everybody to make it over there. I think it will be a very, very interesting and important uh, show. Yeah, he's a former Laredo and and, uh, and he's uh, nationally renowned for his art. So. Really? Where did he? Antonio, I think, right? Internationally. Uh, internationally. He graduated uh, from Martin High School and he's been stationed in different places. Right now he's stationed in, or lives in Austin and from there he goes to different places. As a matter of fact, he just finished coming back from from Europe not too long ago. Um, several of his pieces of work are with the Chicano uh, Museum of Art in Los Angeles, which is headed by Chich Marin. He has traveled with Chich Marin prior uh, on several occasions, not only in the United States, but outside of the United States. He is uh, a very important artist in the Chicano movement, actually probably among the first to to be into that, and most of his work is done, uh, for what I've read before, is done based on his uh, childhood um, memories, memoirs. So he does a lot of uh, images, and most of them are just busk-like of different uh, people that he actually met or saw on the street that actually impressed him or what have you. So it's going to be a very, very fun show. What are the dates of it? Uh, will be, uh, the, the opening is going to be on the 15th, correct? Right? Uh, November? November the 15th. 
and it will last until the, I think it's the beginning of December. And some of the committee members that have worked on that have, have also been able to facilitate a, a proclamation uh, by the city of Orlando right. in honor of his presence. And his uh, display will be there for two months through January, I believe. And one of his, uh, one of his most important paintings, uh, which is uh, uh, Blue Water with Sunglasses, uh, was purchased by the Center of the Arts. And, uh, and in order to be able to begin to purchase artworks that are important in the world of art, but also at the same time to be able to create a collection within the Laredo Center for the Arts that will be memorable for anybody who comes to see it. And uh, they're featuring mostly uh, Laredoans that are working outside of Laredo. Thank you, Julio, for that. Mm -hmm. Any other communications or announcements? Right. Uh, staff reports, update on the public, uh, is it 545 yet? Have we, have we gotten there? Yeah, we it's have. 547, so, so no, 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 no public comments? All right. Uh, let's move on to uh, section uh, seven, which is staff reports. Uh, the first staff report we have is an update on the public art master plan. Who will be handling that? So this is a presentation that uh, we are potentially showing to council. We, we didn't have a chance to show it up uh, last Monday. We ran out of time. But it will give everybody an idea of where we are in terms of the public arts master plan. So here you can see after what was discussed, the vision statement, which is Loretta will become a more attractive place to live, work, do business, and recreate um, through its public art program, the city will build a high quality public art collection that improves and enlivens meaningful places. Those two art will add vibrancy to our major travel corridors and to destinations where people gather, especially downtown, the cultural arts district and the neighborhood centers. And public art will contribute to Loretta's special character and more uh, and community pride. It will celebrate and reflect our history and future potential our unique culture and our cultural environment. And uh, the mission uh, is uh, for the city of Laredo Public Art Program to enhance our community's attractiveness, grow and capitalize on our arts and culture sector, and build a collection of high quality public art. Uh, we encourage the community engagement and dialogue. We encourage creativity, curiosity, and <coughs> contemplation. We produce high quality public art by adhering to professional best practices that are sustainable, transparent, and equitable. And so this is the progress of the, the Public Art Master Plan. Um, they have conducted several community engagement um, presentations with the commission, of course, and uh, a visit uh, to uh, Loretta from the consultants. Um, the community survey closed this last week, and they had 289 respondents. So we did a final push um, the week before it closed with uh, some media appearances and um, also sharing it with um, city staff to, to get some more responses from there. Um, interviews with key cultural stakeholders, including commissioners, nonprofits, visual arts, groups, partner organizations, TAMU, Loretta College, uh, both school districts, artists, etc. Uh, right now, they're meeting with um, city council offices. Um, they have met, for the most part, I think they're missing a couple, but they've met with the different council members uh, to make sure we are considering all the different needs of the different districts. Uh, we're reviewing the recommendation and the analysis and, and research of the funding uh, including the percent of our ordinance. Uh, Up Art Studio has been working and helping us in finding uh, ways in which we can make this sustainable, which is key for us. And there's been several meetings with um, all the different people in the city that are involved with CAP projects to better understand where the funds are coming, what type of projects are uh, the ones that are gonna bring us those monies, um, what monies we can count on and which ones we, we don't necessarily can use 
Um, because when we learn it's not every CAP project is created equal. Um, so also we're, we're still trying to figure out or finalize that part of how to use the hot funds, the hotel occupancy tax for this project and other potential partnering uh, funding sources. Um, for the actual administration of the program, we're looking at different options and I know we presented some of those options last uh, couple of meetings ago. Uh, from extending the contract with the, the uh, consultants for a little while until we figure out if we um, either create an organization or we um, contract somebody, we want to make sure there's continuity in, in this program and we can implement something right away and not wait until we have a person and that kind of starts dying. We, we want to avoid that. Um, Public Art Program Administration, they have been key in helping us look at other programs, other communities, and see how they implement the, the program. So um, there's been different meetings, as I mentioned, with CD staff, uh, obviously with library, with CDB, and other key departments, with management, um, and all this with the ATF understanding what, how this program will fit in all the different projects, all the different CIP projects um, that the city has for the next five years. And of course, we already saw the, the vision, the mission. Um, they're developing that master plan document that is going to have all that, that information with it. So looking ahead, um, they're in the, in the final phase of the work. And October, so we already closed the community survey. Um, they're compiling the results. You're going to see a quick snapshot of the results um, further in the presentation. Um, and they're completing the cultural stakeholder um, interviews and drafting the full master plan document. Um, so when we um, were going to present this to council, we were still meeting, needing more of those council interviews. Right now, I think they're only missing a couple. So that's why you see highlighted city council interviews meetings needed. Um, staff is finalizing the annual report, uh, a proposed annual plan for year 22. Uh, for November, the idea is the, that they're going to deliver the draft document. Uh, we're going to review it, review it not only ourselves as city staff, but also with city management. Uh, and also it's going to be made avail available for review for any comments um, by citizens of, of course, the commission. Um, then the staff will present the report to City Council. This is potentially going to happen the first meeting in January. Um, so this is going to be uh, right here. We have it as December, but in, in conversations this morning with the consultant, they requested if we could move it to January, which we believe overall is going to help us all figure this out really well so that we can uh, we want to make sure that this is something that we can readily uh, adopt and we're not going to be leaving anything pending. Uh, so as I mentioned, this is a sneak peek of the community responses. Uh, most of the respondents were from District 6, 5, 8. Uh, we saw a lower uh, level of responses from the rest of the districts. Uh, the majority of people want to see art uh, in their district and the majority consider downtown and the historic district as surrounding areas as the top priority for public arts. So they do want to see it in their district, but they also want to see downtown, um, some sort of art incorporated into downtown. Um, some of the, these, these are, the next slide, these are some of the comments uh, that people have of what their vision was. This, this was an open question in the survey. And so these are some of the comments that people had in regards to what the vision, um, what's their vision for public art in Laredo. And so we have different different comments, but overall people want to get involved, people want it to be something that will attract people to our community, um, that gives value to our community, and of course that provides that um, avenue for local artists to um, grow in the community with their projects. And this is basically where we are. I don't know if there are any any questions. Uh, just to 
Did we offer the survey to make sure that the email addresses are actual email addresses uh, off of the survey? Or how was the, uh, I guess, just, uh, just to make sure that everybody that submitted it is not like a duplicate person or something like that? Uh, I don't that? know if Elia or Catherine, I don't know if you want to answer uh, that question. How do we make sure that they're individual? Uh, people, the ones that uh, answer the survey and not duplicate, that somebody might have answered a couple of times or two or three times uh, the survey. Okay. Elia, you're on mute. It just seems to be a big discrepancy between District 6 and other high schools. Like yeah. It's gonna, it checks the balances. Right, right. Yeah, and I think um, they have. Hello? Can you talk to me? We can't hear you. We can hear her. We, we can't hear Catherine either, so no. there might be some sort of. Do you have volume on your computer? Yes, it's on. Oh, it's on the top? Hello, hello, can you talk? Oh, can she hear you? No. She can hear us, but she can't, we can can't hear, hear her. Hmm. And there are Nobody be on your side. Because you can hear me. They can hear you, but they can, we can hear you. I don't know if this is going to create a, a loop. Yeah. Well, maybe if we can hear from your computer. Maybe we can, yeah, we can do this. Can you talk? And we were pleased that, roughly speaking, there was a good 
percentage from every district of the city. So all areas of the city are represented. Um, they're not exactly the same, but they're all in that range. So I think that was really good. I don't believe with that in Spanish language, even though the survey was in Spanish language. So um, that was get one gap, but it's typical with surveys, especially on yeah, usually for online surveys, you'll have like an authentication, like authenticate your mm -hmm. Facebook, your Gmail, or something like that. So I think like if we were to do another survey, like in the future, that's very important. I think checking IP addresses is very important, uh, just to make sure you didn't have any duplicates, just for checks and balances. Can, can you hear us? Mm -hmm. Yes. Now we can. We didn't, but we didn't hear anything that was said. <laughs> okay. No, I was just saying, uh, if we could check the IP addresses, that would be really good just to make sure. Uh, but definitely for future surveys, I think it's uh, beneficial for us to have some sort of authentication. For instance, like through Facebook, through Gmail, through something. That way we don't have any duplicates. Uh, and I understand the survey is very long, uh, but you know, if, if, you're, you, if you're trying to do something sneaky, you'll, you'll get around that. It's, it's just uh, checks and balances. So Is that the end of the presentation? Yes. Okay. Uh, moving, uh, any comments or discussions? Comments or discussion to you? Uh, will, be, would, <coughs> will we be present at the meeting with, uh, with the city when that the documentation is present? Yes, okay. that would be a city council meeting. So we will send you the information so that you all can be present. Right. Um, and are the meetings uh, completely open now? I mean, can yes, yeah, anybody can go. Okay. So we, we will make sure to send you that information because we would definitely we would like to have all of you there. Um, would they put it at the beginning or at the end? We can try. If, if, <laughs> if all of you are there and we have a consultant, there's a better chance that we will get it at the beginning. <laughs> yeah, right. we'll do our best to 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 try to catch their attention so they can be at the beginning. Okay. Okay. A uh, second second staff report is uh, the Up Art Studio LLC reports and presentations. Did you turn off the? Do you all have the presentation? The PDF. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Well, first of all, I just want to say thanks to the Department of Media that the stakeholder interviews we've had some really good interviews. I think with a good cross section um, of people. And I feel like um, I feel like I've learned a lot. I feel like we've learned a lot about the Laredo community and what's important to people, and you know what's important for for the future. And um, the so I'm really I'm really happy with the way that turned out. I had a really good um, discussion with Councilmember Perez today. Um, we've got two more council members scheduled next week, and we still have a couple more that we're still trying to schedule, but. Um, I'm really happy with those those conversations that have been happening with the council members, and I feel like I've I've gotten a good discussion. I'm um, that one with uh, with uh, council member Perez. She did a, I think last time like an hour and fifteen minutes, so she did have a lot to say, and I think um, I got her thinking about a lot of things because you know she was like I was asking her about her CIP projects, and she mentioned the skate park and a dog park, and she said she didn't think those were good candidates, and I said, well, no, I I disagree. I think those are really good candidates for public art. You know, dog parks a lot of times will have sculptures uh, of dogs or something related. Um, and skate parks a lot of times are painted as well. So um, she got really excited hearing that, you know, there are um, options for her. And um, so I, I hope that I have continue to have those types of conversations with the council members. <coughs> In terms of um, the presentation, um, Angie, if you would go to the next page. Go to the control. That one? Uh -huh. Yes. And maybe just note, um, just to lighten this up a little bit, we included images of um, mini murals that up our studio has done in Houston. Um, and so that's one of the programs on the table for the public art program in Laredo. And so I think I had just pulled some that might be, you know, particularly of interest or relevant to Laredo. Um, but it's just kind of a fun thing to again see and, and get your juices flowing about what public art can look like on the street. But those are 
very kind of low cost, quick implementation projects that kind of be good to start out. All right, back to you. Um, so this slide is just about the background, um, you know, about when the commission was created, um, you know, who you are, what what you um, are doing, um, and you know, there's, there's, so there's you know current information, you know, list of appointees and videos and agendas, um, you know, at the, on the city secretary's website. Yes. Let's take a, a preview of the section on the commission that's going to be in the master plan document itself. So that's why you're seeing some of this information about background. Yes. Um, and this this year is talking about how each of the commissioners are appointed by an official and you know you're expected to keep um, I think this is important that you know, you're expected to keep um, the elected officials informed and apprised, appraised of the topics addressed by the commission. So, you know, in in a perfect world, you'd be meeting with your council member, um, or in Jesse's case, the mayor. You know, once a month, or you know, maybe even once every two months. If once a month is too much, but we do think that you all should be communicating with them so that. If things do end up having to go to council vote, that they already know what's going on and there's no big surprises. Um, so the two types of roles are, you know, the, you know it's district focused, um, but it's also city wide. So you are all looking at both projects, not just within your district, but also, um, you know, projects in the city wide and advance the interest of the citizen action as a whole. Next page. This picture of a mini mural here. This one's actually in my neighborhood. I live in a neighborhood that's predominantly um, Latino and Hispanic, so a lot of the mini murals in my neighborhood um, reflect um, the Mexican culture. The next slide, please. And here um, we start talking about the roles and duties, um, specific roles and duties um, of the commission. Um, you know, there is a priority procedures for the mayor and city council in the Texas uh, document on what the purpose is of the city commission. Um, and it's to empower you to be more uh, effective and efficient in meeting the responsibilities while enhancing the accessibility and accountability to the public and to the mayor and council. And it also states that the mayor and council shall hold you responsible for the, for the highest standards of accountability and accessibility. Um, and it also says that appointees <coughs> shall reflect the highest ethical standards and organizations for which a commissioner is an officer or board member may not receive city funding. Um, on the next page. And the city. Okay. No, I think that was it. Okay. Unless we. Okay, sorry, so you can move forward. Yeah. Yeah. This was another uh, fun mural. It, it's hard to see in this picture, but it's actually, when you get close up, it looks like embroidery. That one's also in an understanding neighborhood here in Houston. Uh, it says, Hola Aldin, and on, on the back of it, it says, Quiero Mucho. And Aldin um, the name of the neighborhood. Yes. And so the city code um, says that the Fine Arts and Culture Commission has a specific charge from the mayor and council. And that includes that you all should have a vision statement which describes the goals for long range accomplishments. And each commission um, should have a set of bylaws. So our recommendation um, is that these should be reviewed annually by the full commission and they should be updated to reflect the vision statement for the Radio Public Art Master Plan. Um, I did speak to Gail today, and I think she's probably the longest serving um, commissioner, and she did say that um, there is a vision statement. Um, she's out of town right now, but when she gets back and to the radio, to the radio she's going to dig it up and send it to us so that we have it. Um, yeah. She does not recall there being a set of bylaws. So, yeah, I might be she said it to you all so that you can get certain commission um mm -hmm. and one of our key recommendations just in 
speaking with everyone is that there's just a lot of blurriness about the role of the commission. So we thought it might be really helpful as the um, master plan is getting passed to perhaps have a commission retreat. That's something boards of commissions often do just to review and update the vision statement and then kind of come up with your own work plan for the role that you want to play and implement this. And so that way you're going to see in the rest of this presentation is to kind of set up that discussion. And I think one question that came up or one discussion point was, you know, should that vision statement reflect more than just the public art master plan? You know, there are um, other elements other than public art that the commission is, is um, in charge of. So um, I think that, that that vision should definitely include, and correct me if I'm wrong, Catherine, but I think yeah. it should include all of the arts, not just public art. Right. Yeah, the vision statement for the commission would be all arts and culture, and then nested within that is the vision statement for public art. Okay. Next page, please. So another um, part of city code says that as an official city body, the City of Laredo Fine Arts and Culture Commission is intended to have impact and authority. So the overall charge of the commission is to connect citizens, city staff, and elected officials, and to ensure that the public's voice is heard on important civic issues. So with respect to the public art program, um, you know, the duties and powers um, were established by the city ordinance, and the summary that follows derives from that document. Um, the recommendation is that each month, each commission should follow a standing agenda, uh, so each commission meeting, um, to follow a standing agenda that, uh, that covers with each area within its charge, and it should proactively um, contact the elected officials who appointed them to provide an update, just like I was saying a little while ago, that you all should be meeting with your council members, um, ideally once a month. Um, and it's uh, the, your duty to keep the elected officials and the citizens updated on the implementation um, of the plan and you know, your other duties um, <coughs> as well. And the content of this presentation kind of covers the points that could be in a standing agenda. So our thought was that for each specific duty or power that you have related to it, yeah, you could just kind of have a laundry list each month and then look at it partly as a reminder, but partly as a, you know, kind of stimulus to discuss those particular items. Next page, please. Uh, here's another picture which shows a Sarate and a Fenty Fowl, also in my neighborhood. <laughs> next slide. And so the next slide is about the annual report, um, which you all have seen already, and it summarizes the activities and projects and expenditures. Um, it's recommended that it be presented to city, by city staff to the commission shortly after the close of the fiscal year. The commission duties and powers is related to the annual report is to review it and ask questions of the staff, you know, anything that's in the report or um, that you have questions on. You vote to accept the annual report, which you did um, in the previous meeting for um, the last year. And you, know, you need to ensure that this does occur in a timely fashion and you have the duty to keep the elected officials updated on the content of the, of the annual report each year. Um, we did get an update um, this week on the expenditures um, of the council members from that last round of funds, and it hasn't changed since the last time that we saw it. So um, I did ask commission, uh, council members about her, and they said that she was going to look at it so that she could, um, you know, think about what to do with what's remaining in her budget. She, she paid for, or uh, well, the council member before her um, actually um, used his funds for the master plan, so. Anyway, that's just a side. Um, next, next uh, piece. And then there's the annual plan, which you also did review as well. And, and <coughs> the staff will do the foundational work to develop the plan. And you know, this is the document that provides the detailed information on public artworks and commission opportunities, um, which is planned for the coming fiscal year. 
So your duties and powers is to uh, be sure that the plan is prepared by the staff in a timely fashion each year. Um, it will receive a staff briefing on the draft annual plan, which includes an annual budget for the public art program. The commission will discuss and vote on endorsement of the annual plan, which we did. Of course, the one uh, producer I don't think um, had detailed project information, but the future visit will, um, you know, after you vote, the annual plan will go to city council for final review of vote. And at each meeting, the commission should review a monthly report from city staff on the implementation of the annual plan. And commissioners should provide guidance, community insights, and comments. And you have the duty again and to keep the elected official updated on the annual public art plan. And the one for this year still has not gone before city council. Um, so hopefully staff can get on the agenda and actually get time to present that um, soon. Next page. So the artist selection process. Um, city staff has a duty to the resources um, to administer the art selection process. Um, they have a duty to administer a fair, impartial process to select the artists for the city public art commissions with your oversight. Um, the city um, should release a public call for artists for each project opportunity, and they will appoint an independent artist selection panel, which we you know, discussed last time, which would be five to seven people. And they will utilize you know, objective criteria to make the determination on who gets the commission. And the selection <coughs> panel basically will score submissions and it will recommend an artist to be engaged with the project. And the recommended process will be included in the, in the master plan. Next page. So your duties and powers are to assist in assembly the artist selection panel. So if you have ideas of who should serve on a particular panel, then you know, you, um, you know, speak with staff about that. So for example, you may recommend individuals to serve as representatives of the district slash neighborhood in which the artwork will be cited. Um, you have the duty to provide oversight and ensure that the process is fair, transparent, reflects community values, and is conducted using standard evaluation criteria. And the, the selection panel will recommend artists, and you will review the recommendation, and you'll vote on endorsing the you know the selected artist. Um, this will occur for each major public art commission. I think it's uh, every commission over ten thousand um, dollars, and the commission's recommendation goes then goes to the city manager, and it goes to city council for final action if it's over fifty thousand dollars. So the recommendation is that the city manager may approve the final selection and proceed to contract with the artist for public art projects with a total budget of $350,000 and projects with a budget over $50,000, um, like I just said, requires the city council approval um, and it will advance the city council vote. Next slide, please. Now here's an example. Um, this is really cool. This is an area in Houston called East End. And they, um, it's a, again, historically um, Hispanic neighborhood, and they created an esplanade that they activate, um, or at least before COVID, they were doing a lot of events at the esplanade. But they took a shipping container um, and had us paint it with loteria on, on the sides. You can see some of those cards, if you're familiar with the name, um, are not standard, like you see one of Juan Luce um, behind the equity. But there's others on the other sides that have icons of the community, like the church and you know uh, tacos and other things like that that are reflected in the community. Um, but it's used. This is this shipping container in the Esplanade is used as a um, public bathroom, public restroom. Next slide, please. So the public art program, commission duties and powers, the following information is excerpted from City Code Chapter 2, Division 5 of the Ordinance. Um, recommendations for the application of these duties and powers to the public art program, including ongoing implementation of the master plan, um, are noted in the blue type on the following slides. 
And with that print over there is uh, not one of my projects, although I love this one so much. Uh, this one is Jinkina. And you can see that this is one of the, this is a gateway in um, Buenos Aires. And it's just, it's so colorful and vibrant and it's really, it's huge. This picture doesn't have sort of scale, but it's, it's really massive, it's really cool. Next page, please. Do I need to read some of this for a little while? Is, is your voice getting tired? Or is it okay? Please go ahead. Okay, I know it's hard to talk for a long time. Um, so, in this one, the ordinance specifically charges the commission with rec making recommendations, kind of for that expenditure of the hot funds. Uh, we've been having a lot of discussions with staff about this provision of designating up to 15% of Hot Fudge annually for cultural arts grants, um, which is a by state statute. And so this is where funding can come in not only for public art, but also for the other kinds of cultural arts projects that I know you all are interested in, um, whether it be theater, other performing arts, you know, all kinds of creative processes. Um, and typically, like in the city of Austin, city of Houston, once a year, it's posted that it's now the application period, um, it's up for submissions for cultural arts grants, it's promoted to the whole community, everybody knows about it, they know how much money is available. Um, all the grant applications come in during the same period, it closes, and then a selection and evaluation panel goes through all the grant applications, determines who the recipients are going to be, and then announces it. So um, that hasn't been something that today in the radio, but it is under discussion. And it's a much more flexible form of funding as we've discussed than the money that's tied to um, the city's own capital improvement projects. So this language is actually from um, the city code. Um, but so the things that, that would be on your kind of standing agenda annually are to review and vote on current fiscal year city budget for cultural arts grants, a public outreach plan to encourage a broad diversity of applications, um, the grant application review process is created and administered by city staff, um, review the list of applicants selected by city staff as recipients, um, and you know, take breaths on these items and keep elected officials Price. So, this is one where we had some questions about well, what can our role be? Well, this is a you know very specific set of roles. Um, it's really valuable, and it you know, just kind of sort of that checks and balances. Um, so that the community feel that you, as their community representatives, are aware of the process, following along, you know, asking any questions on their behalf. Um, the state council members are very busy. They're dealing with all kinds of issues. And so you're kind of their eyes and ears on this process. So um, if the city moves forward with a formal cultural arts grant program, and, and then you can keep you updated on that, uh, this would be a very important role you could play. And I just want to add that typically with these cultural art, arts grants, it's both artists and cultural arts nonprofits that are typically like they'll be grants for artists and they will also be grants for nonprofits or in some cases fiscally sponsored projects. So those are projects that may not have that nonprofit status but the, the programming meets the nonprofit sort of criteria. And so those um, organizations are allowed to apply for grants as well with the nonprofit part. Right, and I know in Austin and Houston uh, they recently changed the process because most of the money was going to the biggest cultural institutions like the symphony and the opera and the big museums. And they really wanted more of the money to go to artists and to smaller organizations and more diverse artists. So they actually changed the um, 
selection criteria, if you will, to allow the money to learn more, more artists and more entities. So that, that's just an idea that y'all can kind of follow along with that as well. Uh, next slide. Um, and so part of your goal is to advise on arts funding program and public art programming um, to help get solicit applications. So the way we interpreted this for um, public art master plan is that the commission's goal would be to review the, the call for artist process itself, um, or whether it be but the process as it gets defined, um, selection of evaluation criteria, and then to really get out there and actively promote the opportunities and to encourage qualified artists and organizations to apply. Um, we all have networks, and so just helping to make sure the work gets out to as many people as possible, that these opportunities and conditions um, exist, and you know what the deadlines are for the Culture artist process that would be really helpful. Uh, next slide. Um, it also states one of your duties is to make recommendations on programs to be offered at city recreation centers and city events um, and to develop procedural guidelines for evaluating funding applications. Um, so, as relates to this. Public art process, um, you would make recommendations on the process for convening the selection panels. There will be recommendations in our um, master plan, but ultimately you all can review and make your own recommendations for that. Um, and so this will apply to all open call for artist applications and also to the applicants who receive cultural art grants with hot funding benefits. Next slide. And then um, another duty and part of that is making recommendations to the city council for permanent display art. Um, so we took that to mean the capital improvement projects because those are permanent. Uh, so the way you do that is through the annual public art plan. So it's a very important function because that plan document is going to be describe all the artworks in for the coming fiscal year. So that would just be really important to pay attention to because by voting on that, you're basically making the recommendations to city council um, that you endorse or do not endorse the projects going forward. Next slide. Then established standing and special committee is including the artist selection panel. So we've already talked about that um, a little bit, but one thing you know well that you can place to vote on the standing members of the city selection panel. So we're recommending that there be some standing members that don't change from project to project. Uh, for example, you might have a museum curator from another city in Texas who agrees to serve. Um, or you know, it could be another qualified person in the visual arts realm. Um, and then to really pay attention to those monthly updates on the process for current opportunities. Um, so you're really aware of what projects are coming up, what call for artists are opening up, um, and can again help get the word out um, about, you know, what's going on and, and these opportunities. What is that? Oh, there it is. Giant data. It's giant data. Oh, yeah. it, it said it's a cool, like, deadline sculpture. It's a, that it lights up. Where is that? What city is it? Oh, uh, I think it's in Florida. Right. It's really cool. Okay, uh, okay next slide. And then um, finally is making the recommendations to city council for the awards of funding and the proposed locations. So the way that they're 
that um, we're kind of re recommending that this work is again comes through the your review monthly of the plan itself and then the process for each project and will be your call to endorse the recommendation of the artist selection panel. Um, and so, you know, this independent panel will make the selection, but you will kind of be eyes and ears on it before it goes to City Council, if it needs to go to City Council, or to City Manager, if the budget amount is low enough that it just goes to the City Manager. Uh, next slide. So that's it. So we would, we've done a lot of talking. We would love to hear what you all think about this. We hope this you know, stimulates a good discussion with you all, because ultimately this is um, your charge to carry forward. Okay. Any comments? Any comments? Any comments? Any comments? Any comments? Any comments? Any Who will assemble the, uh, the master plan, I guess, each year? Um, is it going to be art uh, in art studio? Who will be with that? The, the master plan it moves forward. It's okay. not an annual master plan, it's an annual report. Okay. And the annual report would be uh, CD staff. Okay. Uh, obviously, because they are charged, it's a contract with them. So okay. it's, it's a one contract. We would like, we're looking at maybe contracting them to help us uh, move the project forward, but not to do another master plan. Okay. Um, it, it, right. um, but definitely the annual plan will be city staff. I might want to consider when this process is completed, um, many cities do a broader arts and culture master plan that looks at all of the arts and culture. So that might be of interest to you next year or the following year, um, you know, as a separate project with a separate consultant. So are there two different budgets that we can use, the HOT and uh, the percent? Yes, yeah. well, currently the HOT, um, there's restrictions for the HOT on how, it, it, there's restrictions for both. So um, they're helping us figure out what, how can we use the 2% and how can we use the HOT? Because there's a cap for the HOT, there's restrictions, but there's also on, on both. So they're helping us figure out the best way of using each fund. Usually the heart is uh, based on history. Um, okay. yes, yes, but there's there's certain uh, cultural projects, although they are, as you mentioned, tied to, they have to bring some component of tourism yeah, to the city. Um, it is specified in the, in the hotel occupancy law um, um, how it can be used for cultural um, activities. No, in the past, excuse me, in the past and before we had the plan, um, the way we put, the way we were tasked as a commission was that we were going to oversee any art project or anything, that everything was going to come to us originally, and then all of a sudden, you know, that started, we, we, you know, we didn't follow that. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Does that mean that now that we have a master plan, we will adhere to that, that everything that is going to be recommended as far as art projects or anything dealing with the arts will have to go to us the way we were originally tasked to do. So the, the idea of the master plan is to leave that, um, those specifics, so that when we present it to council and it, it gets adopted by council, now we have a guideline so that it doesn't change depending on uh, how somebody wants to use the money or how what projects are here. Then okay. it's going to become a guideline mm -hmm. where we can go back and say, wait, the, we, yeah. we can't use it that way. It has to go through the commission. Yeah. There's there's steps that have to go uh, to happen before we can um, do a project or have some sort of... Uh, and, and what is it? I noticed that it's something there that talks about that the final recommendation or acceptance will be by the city manager if it is $50,000 or more. Mm -hmm. So who is the one that will determine a project that is going to be under $50,000? I believe we said that there's going to be the recommendation. It's just those projects don't have to go to council. 
Oh, Over so 50,000 that goes to city council. Exactly. So it's still going to be the recommendation of the commission. It's just we either, if, if a project is under 50,000, the commission recommends to the city manager. If the project is over 50,000, then the commission recommends to city council. Okay. So that's the difference. And it so, still so can the, be. But the final, the final decision still hangs with the city manager. Oh, well, city, city council. council, yes. Even if it's 50,000 below, is still a city council has to approve? Or? No, 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 that's no, city right. manager, but the city, the city council manager. member will be informed about yeah. it. Right, exactly. Right. Mm -hmm. So they're being involved, but does, we wanted to, and in conversations with management and, and the consultants, uh, we wanted to specify that if it's under 50,000, that way we don't have to go through, because it's a lengthier process, mm -hmm. obviously, because of the amount of money. Yeah. There's, there's check, I used, you mentioned there's checks and balances yeah. for everything. So we wanted to make sure that it, it specified that if it's under 50,000, then the commission's recommendation go to city manager, okay. um, and that if it's over 50,000, like with any other project right. that the city does, the recommendation goes to council. Okay. Uh, and that's why I said, we're still gonna inform each district mem uh, council member of the projects that are happening in their district, but it's it's a it's a it facilitates the process the process. Recommendations is that um, an arts commissioner sit on each selection panel. So if the artwork is say in District Seven, then the arts commissioner from District Seven would be on that selection panel. And it would be the duty of the commissioner as well as city staff to make sure the council office is aware of what's going on in their district. Um, so that way, even before the final um, decision that the selection panel comes to as a body, um, a commissioner has been involved in the process. So that's kind of another check and balance on this evening. And, and also, it ensures that the council member can provide their input way before in the process and not at the end where everything has been decided. Um, it can be comments and, and concerns can be addressed way before. So the, the commissioner is not going to be uh, what's the right word? A currency? Make a decision on the project and just go and do it like it's happened in the past. No, no, no. Uh, you mean the council member? Yeah. Mm -hmm. as, as I mentioned, he has to present this, this master plan and for it to be adopted by council. And that gives us a guideline. So now we have to follow this master plan. Now there's there's a process. So this will uh, ensure that every process that is followed is consistent. But that's what I'm saying, you know, from there, in other words, they're gonna just say, I have so much money, so I'm going to erect a, a mural in this particular area. Exactly, because now there's a guideline, and if it's adopted, that's why we want it to be adopted by council. Once it's adopted by council, then we can go yes, back and say, yeah. we cannot do that because we have a master plan that says that we have to go this way. So, um, just as a reference, I don't know if you heard during council meetings, that we make reference a lot to the uh, Viva La Lela master plan. And so every time that it's like, well, why wasn't this approved by um, planning and zoning? And so the, the, the answer is because it doesn't follow the Viva La Lela master plan, because it doesn't follow them. So we, we reference those plans once they are adopted by council. But, so, but, 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 but they always have the power to override. It's just like planning and zoning. I mean, planning, planning and zoning comes and says, we do not favor this rezoning council can override them. They are the final. They're the final say yes. so. So, you know, and that's where, you know, I mean, that's just the nature of their job mm -hmm. is that the, the, all of the committees that were there are, I mean, hopefully they're guided by their own master plan mm -hmm. instead of, you know, in other words, what, when we certify something, for example, and it and complies with our master plan, then it has a double blessing. It's our blessing plus the fact that it complied with the master plan. It, it would. Uh, again, those are the controversial items that sometimes they'll say, well, you know, we want to do this or, and so every staff is telling them, well, that's not what you, you know, that, that doesn't follow the master plan that you, 
that you approve. But, but they do reserve, I mean, if I know the law correctly, they do reserve the right at some point to override the committee. Yeah. Just, like they override planning and zoning, they override, you know, uh, this committee and anybody else. But the specific question was, can they go around it through using monies from their discretionary funds? Discretionary funds. Well, and, and that's what we would be saying, well, no, because I mean, we would, the argument would, from staff would be, this this no because this goes around your master plan. The, the master plan. And one of the things that Catherine and Elia mentioned that is very important is that each commissioner keeps that communication also with um, the city council member of, of that district. And when the committee that's going to make a selection, um, that that commissioner of that district is heavily involved in that um, committee and that keeps the council member or the mayor involved in that. Obviously, we can share that information with them, but coming from, from y'all has a different... And, and hopefully it's reciprocal. In other words, if a council mm -hmm. member feels that they want some art in their district, well, you know, to, to refer to their mm -hmm. committee member so that the process can start here mm -hmm. instead of, <coughs> like they say, at the very end by that person. Yeah, the Exactly. <laughs> Yeah, and I think there's a lot of mutual education here. Um, you know, we recommend that each of you catch a cup of coffee with your what's in this bit of one of you. Go over this presentation today with them. Talk about your duties and power. Talk about your role. Uh, this is probably something they haven't thought about a lot. And you want to hear their thoughts on it and um, share your thoughts. And I think, you know, each of you kind of has the job of engaging and educating the elected official who put you in this role. Um, and so I think that's one way that you can start to achieve, you know, as understanding across the different bodies of the city. And because it's difficult because council has one conversation, the commission has another conversation, staff has another conversation. So as consultants, you know, we're talking to everyone and we're just really encouraging everyone to talk to each other so that there is a very common understanding of how this is going to get done. And you you have those powers right now. I mean, you could put it as a standing item on your agenda to review the uh, fiscal year 2020 monies that were directly allocated council offices and ask for a report every month on the status of those projects. Um, so it's kind of that you have to be proactive and to reach out to the council offices and to get that information. If you're curious, if that's something you're curious about. Wait, well, you've got a, a topic today of those, the money, yeah. the breakdown of the money. Okay. All right, any more item on that item? If not, let's move on to Roman numeral eight. Items for discussion and possible action. Uh, I think the only thing scheduled there is the scheduling of the next meeting. And that would fall on November 18th. Okay. We need a formal board. Do we need board action on that? Yes, okay. it is. All and those in favor of meeting on November 18th at um, 5.30 p.m. Yeah. Signify okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. 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 Make some motion. Second. second. Mark them. There, there. Yes. Second. All those in favor, signify by raising your hand. Thank you very much uh, for your hard work on this. Uh, we're moving in the direction that we wanted to move. So, thank you very much. Very good. All right. Do I hear a motion to adjourn? I so move. Moved by Marcia. Second by Julio. All those in favor. Aye. Aye.